I'm Ron from Titan Aircraft. This is uh, the T-51, uh, powered by an LS3 Corvette engine, 420 horse, constant speed prop. The, uh, the engine is uh, clearly got more stacks on it than what the uh, V8 engine has. So the two end stacks are just fake stacks. The two, the center fours are, are live exhaust stacks. Towards the front, we've got the uh, Whirlwind 84 inch constant speed prop. We manufacture this prop in uh, Austinburg, Ohio. Uh, inside, uh, making the transition from the power from the engine to the prop is an auto flight gearbox. This one's running a uh, 1.9 to, to 1 ratio on it. Uh, we use the oil from the gearbox to uh, control the prop through a uh, Tohostro governor. Well, basically, the, the entire idea of everything we did with this airplane was to make it as true as we possibly could to looking like the real P-51. So designing the nose bowl and the, and the spinner and all these things, they were, they were actually a lot of different efforts put into it. Our original spinner was a one-piece spinner, but it didn't, it didn't look the part. So as we, as we transitioned and continued to try to make it look more the part, we wound up with the two-piece spinner. Same thing with the nose bowl. The nose bowl started out with kind of some funky shapes um, didn't really fit the part, but as, as it evolved, we did wind up getting it to, to transition and, and scale it in and make it look more like the real P-51. And it's, again, it's just a matter of tri trial and error. And, and the, um, we do have a retract gear on it. So the, uh, the landing gear is custom built in our factory. It is a uh, hydraulic over pneumatic. We use nitrogen to, to charge the oil. It has an oleo in it. Uh, radiator is in the scoop. The scoop also went through quite a few evolutions. Um, but it is liquid cooled. The radiator is in the belly just like it is in the real P51. Same with the oil cooler. Obviously it's a modern oil cooler. but Landing light. Hydraulic brakes. Typical airplane stuff there. And the, the wing, center section and wing all have a, uh, a very beefy spar that are built all the way through from the center section all the way out to the end of the wing. You can actually get on this wing, walk all the way out to the end of the tip and jump on this wing. You will not bend it. You will not hurt it. And the wing. No, I know. So. The, uh, the fittings are fiberglass, so most of the fairings, the uh, belly, the wing tips, uh, the horizontal tips, the rudder tips, all, all made out of fiberglass. So we have molds that we, that we make them out of and, and custom fit them. Uh, all uh, metal covered control surfaces, the rudders, the elevators, ailerons, flaps, all of them are all aluminum. So the, there's, uh, there's several different fuel capacities for this wing, everything from a um, 26 gallon tank all the way up to a 42 gallon tank depending on, on on which configuration you order so there's a header tank in the middle of the center section each wing has an 11 gallon tank immediately uh, to the just to the inboard of the center section here and then the options are to have another seven gallon tank here we have an actual six gallon tube tank that you can put in it and we also have drop tanks that you can put on like the, uh, like the bombs were on the real one, but, they, but we put fuel on them. So the wing itself, the leading edge of the wing is foam. So we, it's the inside of this is foam and we and we've, uh, put this in a former to get the shape right. And this is, this is bonded to the foam and then just along the spar edge is where they are the only ribbons you'll find in the, in the leading edge. The back of the wing, is now it is a kit so so the customer himself will construct the back side of this kit the factory builds that for you the factory builds the center section but the back is a is a rib construction conventional rib construction so you'll line all that up get everything squared up and you will drill and ribbon and bond the the rear skins and the and the ribs in the back the flaps come complete for you the uh, ailerons come complete Typical and even typical in the real P-51, you would actually enter the airplane from the front. You'd walk up the tire, 
on the front and you would stand up onto that black anti-skid mark there and then get into the into the aircraft from the front and you can actually uh, get back down off it easier that way although if you're tall enough you can actually throw a leg up grab it grab it here and and step up here and climb up into the aircraft but typically you will mount it from the front and the, and the, Wait, these are retracts the tail wheel is retractable no the tail wheel retracts with the gear and and the doors close up with it as well Currently, the wheel is turned around backwards because the last motion the airplane was in was being pushed backwards. So, but that tail actually awesome. is turned around the other way. So, so and again, the uh, the leading edges of the horizontal come complete for you. These are done; they're foam filled as well. So the and it's the same exact technique building the aft part of the horizontal. Put the ribs in the in the bonding and the riveting and and then the elevators are complete these are these are done at the factory so you don't have to worry about skinning them same with the uh, vertical this is this component right here has got a a foam leading edge in that and but the entire vertical is complete from the factory and, and as well as the rudder and the, and the the rudder is just an aluminum rudder with conventional rib construction on it and the, uh, sliding canopy Right. Just like the real one, it does have the crank handle like the like the real one did. So you, there's a there's a safety latch right on the end of the knob where you would depress that and crank it forward or crank it back, and it's on a uh, a dual cable kind of a system that keeps the the canopy running true. Okay. So it pulls and pushes from both sides at simultaneously. Okay. Now one thing I didn't see, maybe I'm wrong. I didn't see a vent. The actually the then that's uh, um, at. Builder's discretion. You can oh. you can vent these. You can do you can you can modify them any way you want from, okay. from that point. You know, and so. is this something? Because like saying a grommet, you can pull the you can put the sliding canopy off a little bit. Can you you can pull it back just a little bit, although it's not recommended that you fly this plane with the canopy open. Although you can you can gap it uh, an inch or so. You know what I mean? And it's fine that way. And as far as avionics is concerned, it is experimental. So. It is. I guess the builder can, can have whatever. Whatever they want. Typically, um, I went for an all steam gauge look in mine. I wanted to keep it as authentic as possible, so oh. I had nothing glass in mine. It was all, all a steam gauge cool. panel. But we've seen dual, dual glass green panels in them with a mix of uh, gauges like this one has in it. Uh, every configuration you can think of, we've seen. And, uh, okay, awesome. So this airplane here, this one actually has a modified wing. It's what we call our speed wing, and it's what we call our short speed wing. So, um, the, and this wing has not been flown yet, so this will be the first airplane to see this wing in flight. But what we're expecting to see with this, with the power plant that we have on it, and with this wing, we're expecting nothing less than 200 in, in a cruise configuration, and 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 possibly even as much as 215 or 218. Or so, if you have uh, 32 gallons of fuel on board, the airplane uses 12 gallons an hour with the V8 in it. And so, obviously, if you're cruising at 200 miles an hour using that kind of fuel, you can you can get places with it. You know what I mean? So, you'll fly for two and a half hours or three hours, land fuel. You know, and you and you've got yourself, you know, a half a day or so involved in getting from from Ohio to Florida. Evolution of the airplane was it started out with a Rotex in it, which was a hundred horsepower, um, and obviously it was very very light in the nose. So they would actually put lead in the front of it to make that configure the CG of the airplane function with that airplane. But the airplane flew fine with that. And then it evolved to a 2.7 Suzuki engine that uh, actually a customer had installed in an airplane. And uh, the owner of the company went down and flew, flew the air. He wasn't a big advocate of automotive conversion engines to start with. But he went down, he flew the airplane, he was done flying, he was like, he was very impressed with it. So we moved into to trying the 2.7 Suzuki with it. And that airplane, with that engine and it sounded the part it was it was very raspy when it was flying it was it was noisy it really it really sounded like a p51 with that engine in it it was only a 180 horsepower engine 
So we evolved into a, a, a Honda 3.5 Honda engine, which uh, was a 245 horse stock engine, which which the performance greatly improved with that engine. But the Honda is very lethargic. It was quiet. Uh, it didn't really sound the part. You know what I mean? So. But then we evolved to the uh, to the LS3, which we thought with the short staff pipes on it would probably be pretty noisy. We thought it was going to be closer to the to 2.7 Suzuki. But the truth is, it's noisy, but it's it's really not as uh, as raspy as the 2.7 Suzuki was. But it still sounds good. By far, the most popular engine yet has been the the Corvette engine. It has got 420 horse. It. Uh, it's got all the performance you could possibly need. Plus, it's a it's a factory crate engine. It's not a, not a remanufactured engine. It's not a re, rebuilt by somebody in the garage. It is a brand new GM crate engine, which has a big plus to it. And it's an LS3, and everybody knows that if it says LS3 on it, it's a it's a great engine to start with. So you can get you can get this airplane in a in a light sport version. Now you will have to you can get away with putting the Suzuki engine on it. You will need to fix the gear, and it cannot have a um, constant speed. So you have to put a uh, fixed pitch prop on it, and. Uh, I mean, and you can do it, and it's still, the airplane is still a lot of fun, but it's uh, it, it, it's not really the most viable option in the world. But if, you, if you're in a situation where that's what you need, it certainly is an option. So the the base kit price is $65,000 for this airplane. Uh, the firewall forward and the prop, and by the time you put just a basic set of avionics in this airplane, you're going to need 120 to 130 to complete this airplane flying it. So, so um, there are different options. You can get a, uh, a factory assist on this airplane. You can get a uh, quick build on this airplane. And obviously you can look into the other uh, other engine packages that we that we do offer for this airplane. But pretty much moving forward, it's uh, and the most popular, like I say, is still the LS3. So, and if you want to contact the factory for more specific pricing, you can get a hold of us at titanaircraft.com.